Hey, what's going on YouTube? Uh, Phil Craft Survival, Mike Glover here with uh, Training Director uh, Casey Hildreth. Guys ask us a lot about, hey, what is the type of course that you train? Like, what is Defensive Pistol Level 1, formerly known as Gunfighter Pistol Level 1? And I wanted to tell you a little bit about the course, but I wanted to show you some methodology that's different than most companies. I don't get out a lot. Casey and the A-Team, they get out often. Uh, every time I get out, I try to work on um, becoming a better instructor, and I learn from my students. But a lot of the things that I do is based on a methodology called train the trainer, right? Train the trainer. The difference is most classes that you attend, you might show up and you might work drills, and you try to get the reps because you want to be more proficient by the end of the training block. For us, we want to give you tools so you can go away from the training experience and then exercise and practice on your own to become better. So a couple things that are different. One, context. We have to give the context and define the why. And two, we're training you how to become a better trainer. One of the things that uh, I want to show you is we do something called shooter coach or shooter safety. Most ranges don't do this. There's a, a few reasons why they don't do it. But I think it's a great way to increase the size of your students um, without compromising safety. Because everybody needs to be responsible, not only for themselves, but for each other. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to get eyes and ears on. Well, bam. And then what I'm going to do is show you the position that we recommend for doing shooter coach. So if Casey's online facing the target, I'm the coach. I want to be within arm's reach of the shooter, but I also want to be able to stop an unsafe act. So I need to be able to see what he's doing with his hands. So I might hover him without impeding his ability to shoot. I also want to move around the shooter because I'm also getting the benefit of observing him to see what he's doing. For example, if we're working on trigger control and I want to move to his dominant side to see his trigger run, that might be advantageous or vice versa. I might want to work on the support side. So in this position as well, I can give nonverbal communication. Like, hey, we're not doing that. Not everybody has $500 pelt tours on their head. We want to be able to communicate nonverbal. I could also stay tuned in to the primary instructor and his guidance. So he's saying, hey, lock and load. Hey, lock and load. Okay, go ahead and lock and load. So part of this is me demonstrating to you shooter coach, but I want to show you how we index. So I'm going to run Casey through a drill, and then after that drill, I'm going to index, and then we're going to lock and clear the gun and make it safe, okay? So shooter, we're going to do five rounds, center target on the command of threat and cadence. The cadence is one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Shooter ready, stand by. Threat. All right, we're going to do it again. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Stand by. Threat. Good. All right, now I want you to lock and clear the gun. Drops the source of feed. Drops the round out of the gun. Three-point check and then coach check. This is the key in safety because we're double-checking to ensure that we have both the shooter and the safety checking it. He checks it inside the barrel, magwell, and bolt face, and I do the same with a gun pointed down range. One, two, three, slide forward, put it away. Now, when it's slide forward and put away, we tell our students, slide forward, look at your holster, put it away. Before you do anything, like pick up magazines, rotate out, the gun from that static position needs to be put away. Basic training tip. Guys, the fundamentals of gunfighting are grip, trigger control, alignment, and alternate positioning. That followed by shooting and moving and inoculation of stress in a stress shoot is defensive pistol level one. What's defensive pistol level two? Well, defensive pistol level two is the environment. We have a few environments, including CQD, close quarters defense, with a sim house or a shoot house that's being built at Gritter Sports in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. And we also have vehicle dynamics as a different environment, right? This doesn't change. The environment changes. And that's really important. We want to build the base 
and then put that base in different environments, and that creates different stressors. Guys, PhilCraftSurvival.com, track Casey, track me, and links down below, and make sure you track all the training and come out and train with us. There's a lot of people who watch virtual training, who watch us on YouTube and online, but if you haven't trained with us, then you can't practically apply it. Cool. Till next time. Peace out.